This is Michael McKeon, a.k.a. Morris Fletcher, a.k.a. Chuck McGill. You know who I am. But it's time for Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. You're watching Inside the Gilliverse, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. Brought to you by the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. For all your favorite characters from the Gillivers, shop the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. Also brought to you by Rode Microphones, the official microphone supplier of Inside the Gillivers. See their entire lineup today at Rode.com. Now, please welcome your host, Eric Broadbent. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Season 2, Episode 15 of Inside the Gilliverse, where we talk things all, you know, I've said this so many times, <laughs> where we talk all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul, and I think my name is Eric Broadbent, but I certainly know who my guest name is, and it's a pleasure to have him back, actor Peter Dyseth. How you doing, Peter? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for having me back. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be here. It's great. And uh, I'm sure you're going to do a much better job than I am this evening. So maybe we can, we can, we'll pretend this all went real smooth at our start of our show here, but it's great to have you back. It, it, it's, it goes to show you how easy I get discombobulated. My mouse wasn't working at the start of the show. And, uh, and then I messed up my microphone as well too. So it's all good. We, we can only go up from here. Correct. Absolutely. <laughs> it's nice to have you back. And for those of you that are watching tonight and haven't seen our very first episode, uh, Peter was our very first guest on the show with Tom Schnauz and uh, when Tom was co-hosting with us for 10 episodes. And I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, uh, kicking off the show in style. And you were a little hard on yourself on Twitter. You're saying, uh, uh, I, I forget how you worded, but I think we picked a very, very good guest to kick off our show. I said I set the bar nice and low. So yeah. But it could, uh, you know. No, it's, no, you're too hard on yourself. It was, it was great. And I, I think you, you were also, uh, it kind of made me take notice of the amount of musicianship, uh, t- uh, musical talent inside the Gilliverse. Like, you know, you're a musician yourself, Tom plays, I play, and there's so many other people, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's, uh, there's a huge overlap I found in the uh, film and television community and the music community. Yeah, yeah. Michael Mando, who's got a, he's got gone on anniversary of one of his new singles and things like that as well, too. Yeah, just so much. Well, we've got a bunch of people jumping in the chat. We've got some fun questions for you this evening. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some great uh, cat discussion as well, too. Uh, that goes without saying with, with you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure June's going to make an appearance. Uh, so we right off the hop, there is a super chat question coming in from, uh, let me see here. I got to go back and grab it. Uh, one second. I think it was from Jen Stevens. Let's go have a look here. If I can get to that. She says, uh, question, Peter, how was the experience of playing Tom Horn in your episode of Gunslingers? As a fan of Westerns, I thought you were great. Uh, thanks. Also, Dexter says hi to June. June, I'm sure, says hi back to Dexter. I, I, I love Dexter, by the way, that picture. Um, Jen, Jen posted a picture on Twitter earlier today. And it was just Dexter lying flat out. Oh, yeah, right, right. Live. It was wonderful. Um, oh, my gosh. I'm like blushing. Tom Horn. Yeah, that was. Um, that was uh, 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 wow, that was an amazing experience. That was my first real uh, role. Um, on on camera i'd done mostly uh theater up until then and it was a, a brand new thing and it was kind of i was just talking with my friend um stafford not too long ago stafford douglas he plays billy the kid in a, in a different episode of that it was this um docudrama series on uh, the american heroes channel or something like that uh, several years back i was just talking with him about that and how it was such a, a perfect environment for for brand new people to uh, to the film and television world because it was just it was almost like guerrilla filmmaking it was non-union it was like hustling out there to to get it all done and 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 uh learning on the fly everyone learning on the fly they were doing there were six episodes in the season i think they were filming them all at once we went all over to these um these great um uh, uh um like like fake uh old west towns okay here in new mexico like bonanza creek ranch where they they film silverado and and all these great westerns that i grew up watching and my dad is a 
of course, a huge fan of Westerns. I say, of course, because most dads are. But, um, <laughs> he was very excited that I got to, to sort of be in one. But it was, a, yeah, it was an amazing experience. I made a lot of uh, lifelong friends and uh, learned a lot about the business in that sort of, it was sort of like a, a summer boot camp. Very, very nice. Are there, are there a lot of deserted, like, uh, Western towns, like, kind of out that way, or? There are, and, and it's, I won't call them deserted. There's a lot of uh, uh, places, ranches, that are, were either built for or used exclusively for film and television productions okay. now. So they're all, you know, all the, all the, the saloons and the, the jailhouses, they all have, you know, USB ports and, you know, like, <laughs> like and there's Wi-Fi all over, so, so it's all connected. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot of really great places, and all the names are are escaping me except for Bonanza Creek Ranch. Yeah, there's um, a lot that you can Google. You know, it's funny. You know, we think back of the old days with the spittoons and everything of that nature, and you know the player pianos and stuff. Now we've got Wi-Fi hub, uh, you know, uh, USB hubs and Wi-Fi. <laughs> Yeah. We've come a long way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have another super chat question coming in from, uh, or I'm not sure if it's a super chat question, but it's from Zoko Santos it says, after watching a performance in Better Call Saul and Roswell, would you see yourself in the superhero genre like Arrowverse or MCU? Uh, let me see any good moments behind the scenes in Roswell. So yeah, we'll talk we to kind of touch base on that again as well too. Oh my gosh. It is like a dream of mine to be in the comic book show or movie um i am uh i've never run a marathon before let alone like two in a row but i am currently watching the arrowverse i'm a completist so i started from the the beginning and i'm like like 120 episodes in so i am fully invested if any of those shows ever came calling i would run there in a heartbeat but uh, no i've I've always loved uh, uh comic books and superheroes and and all that. I think the Arrowverse, especially, I think they do such a great job for the storytelling and the relationships and, and how they manage to um, have these just really epic um, action moments on a limited budget. I won't say super limited because mm-hmm. they got a good deal of money, but you know, it's not limited like a, more so than others. Summer blockbuster film. It's, it's a weekly show, but um, anyway, nothing for nothing but love and respect for all those shows. And yeah, I would, in a heartbeat participate in any way like i would be i'd be the you know a guard in the jail just standing in the back or you know like paint me gray and i'll be a rock in the background <laughs> anything you can get right yeah i i last time you were here you were talking a lot about reading i, I know you're an avid reader and you're recommending mm-hmm. some books and things like that but if, has there been anything over the past year you know since last time you've been here uh television wise that you've been binging anything you can recommend for us to check out i i know i'm looking for some more material to watch as well too like a series of sorts or maybe a good documentary or a movie whatever yeah yeah absolutely and uh they all just flew right out of my brain as as that question. <laughs> well if they come back you can let us know the way uh the way to uh to strike temporary amnesia in me is to ask me what my favorite book is my favorite movie or television show but, and there um, you go well, well let's see I, I i told you i've been I've been watching arrowverse mm-hmm. I pretty much have to stick to that exclusively if i plan on getting through it in my lifetime There's yeah like 700 episodes currently um but uh gosh i don't know in the last year what has come out but um god i've left a lot of stuff that is all gone i just finished uh, uh falcon and the winter soldier nice. which i really enjoyed um you know i like the mcu stuff quite a lot um and of course one division before that i really loved um i haven't seen that at all one division oh it's great is it it's wonderful yeah yeah it's a whole, it's, it, it's kind of a whole new, uh, vibe for the MCU. Okay. It's not weird. I won't say it's like weird, but, but it's in some ways almost feels almost uh, experimental and it's, um, it's really phenomenal. I'll have to, I'll have to check it for sure. Yeah. We, another question here coming in from Bob Rich. Bob says in television and film, in your opinion, who are some directors and writers who are masters of story structure? There we go. There's the amnesia again. (laughs) Um, Well, I mean, obviously, we're all here because we we know that people in the in the Gilliverse, the the writers are just amazing. Um, So they're at the they're at the top of my list. But um, oh, boy, 
it's it's happening again. Um, you know, Ryan. I think Ryan Johnson. Oh, is this this is when I get the backlash? I guess from a certain from a certain corner of the internet. <laughs> yeah, <Ryan's> phenomenal. <laughs> I think he's such a good storyteller, um, both as a writer and uh, and as a director. Um, um, boy, Ryan Coogler. Um, um, yeah, there's a lot. I know. It's, I'll, I'll think. Let's circle back. Let's circle yep. back. We've got plenty of time. We've got plenty of time, and it's always safe to fall with sweat. It, yeah, I know we're working. We're making you work real hard right off the get go, right? Usually, this doesn't happen until about twenty minutes in. <laughs> I need to make lists before these. I things. know, I know. I might have. I might have to get some questions in advance and give cheat sheets just just for safety. But I mean, I think we can always fall back on our, our, our fantastic and talented men and women in the writers' room and uh, inside uh, the Killiverse for sure. They're an amazing team. Amazing team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Six seasons, man. We're up coming up to season six where, where they're filming right now, which we'll talk about very, very soon. A couple more super chats coming in as well, too. This is just a kind of a yeah. comment from uh, from Andrea, Andrew Nowak in Germany. She says, inside the Killiverse rocks. Happy to have you here today, Peter. And there is a super chat. Thank you very much, Andrea. A super chat from Rogava. Uh, Rogava says, love your performance in Better Call Saul. A personal observation. The way your character is written in the show, in some scenes, I feel like he's Jimmy's conscience that he's bouncing thoughts of uh, thoughts off of. Did the writers intend it this way? Do you know anything about that? You know, I don't know a lot about um, the, the genesis of, of the character or, or the writer's purpose for the mm -hmm. character but that, that's it's sort of how i felt too um whether or not it's a, a conscience I, I never thought about that and i like that i always thought of it as sort of um a sort of a, a check-in on on where where jimmy's at um as it bounces off of uh uh bounces off of bill uh, where he is sort of on the, the power structure of things how he's how he's feeling if he's feeling more confident or if he's feeling real low if he's feeling um you know righteous or you know high morals or if he's he's feeling like uh like slime it, it just kind of you kind of get a sense of of where he is based on how he interacts with uh with bill mm -hmm. so it's always seemed like this sort of this sort of check-in yeah like, separate from the main plot is sort of like, let's go to the courthouse and let's see, you know, what this dynamic is like now, like where, where Jimmy is at now, because Bill is pretty much always in the same place, yeah. which is just, just clawing for, for mediocrity. Yeah. Groundhog day <laughs> over and over and over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Almost, um, almost like the beginning of uh, Bob Odenkirk's new movie. Have you seen nobody yet? Yeah, I just watched it. Yeah, so you know, he's it's like Groundhog Day, right? Living that same thing every yeah. day, missing the garbage, and that's kind of Bill's life every day. You yeah. know, trip to the vending machine, trip to the coffee machine. Yeah, to work, to home, to sleep. That's right. Well, here is actually a perfect segue right now for that for that alone. Uh, this one uh, tonight, they're going to jump into some of our audio questions. We have three. Uh, right. So tonight, actually, my better half, Sandra Lee, who is our executive producer, she has one. And she sent me a text message just a second ago as well, too. She's commenting on your bamboo plant behind you as well. She said bamboo plant is looking nice. She's a green thumb. So she, she sees, sees things like that. And uh, I don't usually know what's what. So, But here's her question. And it talks about the vending machine. So this is from Sandra Lee. Hi, Peter. Sandra Lee here, a.k.a. Nocturnal Butterfly. I have to say Oakley is one of my favorite characters on the show. My questions for you are, I'm sneaking two in because I can. Number one, does Oakley eat a lot of potato chips out of necessity or does he really love those potato chips? Number two, do you personally enjoy potato chips? And if so, what's your favorite flavor? Thank you so very much and I hope to see you in season six of Better Call Saul. Don't we all? So there you go. Two double question. Well, thanks for thanks for asking question. Um, so the, the first one was, uh, oh yeah, um, you know, I kind of I kind of go back and forth with this. I don't really think that he that that, that Bill, um, and I'm I'm just I'm just guessing here. I'm just pulling it out, but um, uh, I really don't think that he is very much in love with the vending machine food. I don't think he really likes the chips. I think it's a more of a necessity convenience thing 
think he's really busy at work and uh, he doesn't have time to go out for lunch and maybe doesn't have anybody to go out to lunch with. Mm -hmm. And so he, he runs to the vending machine. Um, and I say that now thinking, thinking about, um, the scene in in season three of sunk costs, I think it was the episode where, uh, um, it's, it's, uh, uh, Jimmy and, and Bill on the bench and with the, ham the hamburger sequence. Oh yes, yeah, we talked about that. Which uh, you know, Bill just snuck in there to get those French fries and 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 uh, wormed his way in to get in the hamburger at the end. Um, I think that's what he that's what he really wants, but <laughs> he doesn't have the time or the company to do that. Personally, um, yeah, I like potato chips. Yeah, um, I sort of uh, yeah. I always loved I loved Doritos back in the day. Now. We're getting a little more uh, health conscious. So um, they have these um, sort of, uh, they're kind of Pringles, but they're they're made by a different company and they're like a little healthier. Okay. And I just jump on those. Love them. Nice. Kind of nice. I was saying to one of our guests, I forget who it was, the past few episodes ago, we found uh, Funyuns here in, in Ontario, Canada, which are I would assume they're rare. So a mm -hmm. bit of a Breaking Bad reference there. It was pretty cool to have that. I, was, I should have just kept the bag without eating them. It sounds nice with all prop, you know, but yeah, it was nice to have for sure. So thank you for answering that question. Uh, yeah. the next one I believe is from Karina. Karina is one of our moderators here as well too. And this is her question. Hi, Peter. This is Karina. Welcome back. When in college, you got to improv a scene with the legendary Bruce Campbell for his film, My Name is Bruce, as well as do your first background work. I've met Bruce countless times going way back to the early horror convention days since I'm a huge Evil Dead fan and I love his books as well. Can you tell us more about that experience and have you read all of his books? Yeah. Yes, yes and yes. Yeah, I read, um, uh, uh, well, no, I, I just I just the other day saw that there is a third one. Oh, thank you, coffee. <laughs> thank you. I, I saw that he's got a, a third book out uh from like 2017 it's a picture of him like in front of a college or something and i was like i haven't read that but i read uh, if chins could kill and confessions of a movie star um back when they came out yeah, i loved it it was actually my second uh back uh, background job my first one was uh in college when i was in california in college and i got the chance to do background for the the first sam raimi spider-man um movie in the uh in the wrestling scene i mean one of the one of the spectators in the wrestling scene which is actually kind of funny because uh bruce kimball's in that scene he was actually like uh, 20 feet away from me in that scene and then five six years later i did uh yeah i was in in college at southern oregon university in ashland uh which is near where uh bruce lives he's up in well i'm not gonna tell you the address no no, no of course <laughs> okay. i don't know the address but um yeah, i think we were a bust up there but somewhere in in Jackson or Jackson County or somewhere up in the South Central uh, Oregon and he has this huge plot of land um, and he built like a set there like a whole town set of town of I think it was called Goldlick the movie was called um, My Name is Bruce and it's a really uh, funny sort of meta meta comedy horror movie but um yeah there was a i was i was i was in theater school at southern oregon university and there was a an ad that came up for you know auditions for a movie and a bunch of us went and um one of my classmates grace ended up getting like the main uh a romantic lead oh, which wow. was wonderful for her and i was um I was the, this background fella in the, in the Hawaiian shirt, and it was it was hard. It was hard. Background work is, is some of the hardest, most grueling, exhausting work out there. Um, I did it a lot, and it, it's just long days, and and kind of get herded around like cattle, and and physically placed in place. You know, it's 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 really hard work and it was there was dust storms going while we were out there and i would come home just like caked and dirt and dust and i just had the time of my life it was so much fun i imagine i imagine it's one of those uh you know hurry up and wait type environments get there get there rush 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 get there and then just wait for the call wait you know and like you yeah. say it's long days there's a lot of many takes and things of that nature yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of things. Well, it was also on just a shoestring budget. I think he, I mean, I'm sure he has some help, but he directed it himself. And I think a large part of the financing was probably, probably his. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you have, when you're working on a, on a production that doesn't have a whole lot of money, then it's, you kind of have to get as much as you can as quickly as you can. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, without skimping on, 
on quality to the, to, to the best of your ability. So it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's exhausting, but it's, it's amazing. It's wonderful. It's so, kind of like Jimmy's film students. I'm paying you for the day. You're here for the day. <laughs> you're not going home. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm having a deja vu that with the, the Bruce Campbell stuff. Cause I, did you share it? Uh, I think you shared some of the pictures on either Facebook or Twitter or both. Did you shared them sometime recently? Didn't you? Yeah, I think I think months or a year ago, you're going to jump onto the computer now. Okay. Oh, we got June, do we? Yeah. Oh. How is June? Oh, I think we're oh, going to see her. Nope. Nope. <laughs> now. Being shy. Yeah. Yeah, I shared. Uh, uh, there's a. I'll, I'll bump it up on on Twitter. If sure. You, uh, um, it's just my name at Peter Dyseth. If, if anybody wants to come by, I'll uh, I'll post that picture again. I have some some movie stills from My Name Is Bruce. Okay. Uh, me in the back just tried to steal my hat <laughs> that's hilarious anyway, yeah, yeah i we have your we have your twitter link I'm as well too. Alone. I have a terrible memory no but. problem no problem we we have your twitter link down in the description as well too and our team are sharing in the chat as well too so yeah they'll follow you on twitter there yeah we got you there your instagram and also your imd profile imdb profile as well too okay we have one more audio question we'll jump back to more of the chat and some of my questions as well this one here is from Lori, and she usually has some deep dive questions that sometimes um confuses uh, e even our guests so we'll find out or definitely going back to the past for sure so here she is hey peter this is Lori. i wanted to ask if you've ever been in touch with sean riley or any of your fellow classmates that were in your high school theater class since you've gone on to become an actor also as an animal lover i really enjoy your tweets with pictures of your kitty cat thanks very much thanks Lori. um yeah Wow. Now I, I, my, my mind is going like, does she, does she know Sean or is she <laughs> that somewhere? Or, yeah. Um, not as much as I'd like. Um, I, I grew up in, and went to, to school, high school, which Sean Riley was my, uh, my high school theater teacher. My first, uh, first time I ever stepped on stage or ever thought about, about doing this thing was in his class. Um, so I owe a, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of where I am today to him. Um, but I went to school in uh, in Washington State, and now I live in New Mexico, and so I don't. Um, I just feel kind of removed from from folks up there. Um, some of my best friends who I did uh, who I did theater with, um, we still text now and then. Mm -hmm. But also kind of, I don't don't really want to get into it. But I kind of I kind of stepped away from from Facebook a little bit mm -hmm. and i don't have a public uh, like actor profile on no. facebook i just have my own personal account for family and stuff but um it was just getting a little wild mm -hmm. over there in the last couple of years so i'm mostly just kind of stick to twitter and i've been trying to keep up on the instagram but so most of my communication with folks from back home like in school was was on was on facebook so it's kind of kind of lost out of it which is which is sad. That's a good reminder that that I should should get in contact with them. Um, but like people I went to college with uh, more recently, like in Oregon and in, in California, I keep up um, uh, as best I can. That's good. Um, but having uh, having a kiddo and a and a furry kiddo, uh, <laughs> life is uh, life is busy. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. Rapid, I guess, no? Yeah. But yeah. It is hard to keep up with all the profiles, though. I mean, you know, with, there's so many platforms out there, and you got to try to, you know, sprinkle a little bit on each of them, and it's just, it is just so hard. It is, yeah. Yeah. And that's, it, that's, it's sad. It's sad that it is. But, um, yeah, we just meet. We meet so many people in our life uh, that it's it's just impossible to to maintain. I know. You know, constant relationships with everyone. Yeah. Everyone that we'd like to or feel like we should. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to thank you, Lori. I'm going to, I'm going to send Sean a message and say, how you doing? That's good. That's always good to touch base for sure. You never, you never know. Right. Yeah. Especially with this, you know, the situations we're all under in this, this past year and a, it feels like five years, but you're in a little bit. Have you, have you and the family had vaccine shots yet? Uh, yeah, fortunately, um, we have, yeah. My, and wife, it, and I, my wife and I were able to get, uh, get ours. Um, just got, uh, in our, in our folks, We've just we've just had theirs, so um, now we're just waiting on ones for the kiddos, you know. Nice, nice. Which, which apparently they're they're testing now. So good. Did you did you are you the better better half? Or did they have you have any side effects at all? Any pain or any discomfort? Not at all. Good. Not, not at all. Um, I had, um, and I know it's it's totally different for for absolutely everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but we had I won't say not at all. We had Moderna one, and um, after the second one. 
my arm was sore for a day. We were, we were, you know, a little extra tired that night. Um, and I think my wife had like a little bit more aches and pains than I did the next day. But after a day, we were just like totally fine. And my mom who has all sorts of pre-existing conditions, she had Pfizer and she was like, fine. <laughs> she had a sore arm for like a couple of hours after the first shot and after the second shot she's like i didn't feel a thing wow so i guess we uh we lucked out i know there's other folks who are having a, a real hard time with it um and there's other folks who are scared that they will have a hard time with it but i i hope that everyone um does what needs to be done and, and gets their shots as they can yeah i i'm looking forward to it myself and i'm not uh i I'm, I'm terrified of needles i'm literally terrified of needles i i tense up and that's why i tend to hurt a lot because I, my muscles will tense up and i have a spasm and yeah. i also yeah. have a bad reaction to medication of any kind if i take like an antihistamine i get like high like it's, so i'm i'm planning i was telling sandra i was going to plan on taking the next day of doing nothing just after the shot just just because that's of my idea. yeah and that's who knows great. Mm -hmm. but I am looking forward to it. We're going to try to get down your way. Well, actually, we're not trying. We are coming down uh, as long as there's travel and it's safe. Uh, we're going to be coming down to New Mexico uh, this year. So Great. we're looking forward to it. We'll hit you up for sure when we get down there. Absolutely. Yeah, we have we have some things planned. We'll, 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 we'll clue you in on the details uh, as soon as we can. Uh, but here's some more questions coming in. Some great, great questions. This one is from Clifford asking, Peter, what shows in the Arrowverse are you watching, Arrow or Flash? <laughs> I like I, I said I'm a, I'm a completist, and I, I think that has something to do with um, um, I don't know what I just I think it's telling of maybe my mental. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I started from the beginning. I started from you know Arrow season one episode one, and it went through went through the first two seasons, and then I did Arrow Flash, Arrow Flash, Arrow Flash. Arrow Flash Constantine, Arrow Flash Constantine until I got through Constantine. And then I did Vixen. And now, right now, I'm currently on season four of Arrow, two of Flash, and one of Supergirl. Okay. Man, oh man. So it does sound like there's some dedication needed there. Yeah, I feel like I do this with comics too, and it's terrible. Like, I really want to get, I really want to start reading like new Batman, Justice League. Mm -hmm. Um, Ask comics but because it's me i got to go back like five years and just start reading every single one so i'm so i'm caught up just in case there's like one little piece of information that that won't make sense if i haven't read or seen everything beforehand yeah which is which is not true they, they make those so that you can enjoy them all yeah by themselves but i just i feel like i want the whole story so well, that's, that's like a lot of shows like, you know, we're talking about binge watching different things on TV and things like that. They, you know, some of these shows that they're like, you got like your shameless and things like that, where there's like 10, 11 seasons. Walking Dead is a, a show I love. I, I love to death. I never, I ever, ever, and we'll talk about the, the Gilliverse. We're sh sharing some of the same casting directors between uh, Gilliverse and uh, Walking Dead as well, too. Mm -hmm. But I never thought I would give up on Walking Dead, but I've become that person now that I've lost a little bit of interest because it's just dragged on a little too long, in my personal opinion. Um, you know, but there's these shows where you look at it like five, six, eight, 10, 12 seasons. It's like, okay. And we talk about our, our schedules, how, you know, we can't even commit to friends to talking with friends all the time. How are we going to get through 10 seasons of something? So you yeah. really have to hear from your friends and you get some different opinions. And are, is it worth me watching 10 seasons or, you know? Yeah, just to, before we make that commitment, right? Because sometimes you get into that and then you just don't want to stop. You get to the point of no return and you got to see it through. Or you get to a point where you get kind of tired of it and yeah. you want to just like take a break, but then you take too long of a break. And then you're like, I don't really remember what happened in the last few episodes I watched or the last season I watched. And then it's either you got to go back to the beginning or um, you just got to like never watch it. I know. <laughs> Well, that's me. That's me. I'm sure there are people are, are more more relaxed about their viewing. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, that happened here to Sandra here in the house. She got sick for, for a better part of almost two years, and she was probably through the first season or two of Better Call Saul. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, five good long seasons. And so she lost a lot of content. So we're, we're going back through again and binge watching that again, catching back up. And we're actually at uh, both the fifth episode of season five right now. 
So, mm-hmm. uh, so the, it's been a lot of catch up as well too. And that, that's a show. I mean, obviously I know I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, speaking to the choir here at this one, cause you're part of the show, but you're also a fan of it. You yeah. know, that the, anything inside the breaking bad or the Gilliverse, we should say is so addicting that you just can't stop. I mean, I, I haven't heard too many people say they've gotten jumped in and, and felt they've had to bail out. No, no. And it's, it's so, um, yeah, it's so propulsive. Even the, the so-called slower episodes or, mm-hmm. or storylines are, are to me so filled with, uh, they're so dense with, um, if not plot stuff, then, then character stuff. And it just, uh, yeah, it really draws you in. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was just thinking about this earlier today. Um, when I was first watching breaking bad, I was just absolutely loving. It. I was watching with my wife. Um, and we watched an episode or two every, every couple of nights and some pizza or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we made it through the third season. And then for some reason that I cannot remember, we kind of got sidetracked on something else. Um, cause we don't watch a, a lot of TV. So when we get together to watch someone, it's like, we're only going to watch one or two episodes max. Or mm-hmm. maybe we watch something else and we never came, didn't come back to it for a long time. Um, and then when I did, I, I had to start over. But I, I got to start over. Yeah, it's just, it's just there's so much there's so much happening, um, and, and everything every every part of it. Oh, there she is! I was waiting for <laughs> colors. Uh, everything that comes after, like it's such a tapestry. It's the same with Better Call Saul. This is Junie. Say hi. Hi, June. <laughs> She's adorable. You know, right now. Okay. Bye. I saw you looking up to your upper right there. So she was on a perch up there. There's a, I'm in a kind of a weird corner. <laughs> uh, we need to brush you is what we need to do. I'm in kind of a weird corner of the house right now, but there's a cat tree. right. Oh, there, there. you go. Yep. So she was up there. Yeah. She's been jumping up there. I, I, I was, you're looking almost with a bit of a look of fear. Cause I saw you looking up to your upper right there. Yeah, Cause there's just, just out of frame here. Yeah there's this perch and she was sitting here just staring down at me and swiping at my hat just out of frame. She's not there now. Now I don't know where she is, which does, makes me more scared. Does she ever go after your feet like in the, in the middle of the night or anything like that? Yes. Yes. Oh, I miss the days when I could um, go to bed at night without wearing socks, but I can't now I can't because she knows and she'll get up under the covers and and claw them it's been better lately i went I, I bet i could get away with going bare feet now but oh and she was a kitten for the first uh yeah year year and a half it was wild well you were asking me off the air you're asking me about our cats uh, uh gypsy and windy mm-hmm. and and gypsy I, I don't know who's well gypsy's probably the worst when it comes to antics like that and this happened just about two or three nights back this happened to sandra so gypsy hides under our bed it's almost like the longest game of hide and seek or, or, or like not the hiding to scare. So Sandra gets up to use the washroom in the middle of the night, probably like three o'clock in the morning. And I hear her scream. So Gypsy's waiting the whole time. So Sandra's walking without socks and Gypsy just comes out and she claws her and I'm sound asleep. And, and, and so I just jump up and I'm like, the floor is lava. You know, basically remember as when we're kids, right? And that's it, literally it. The cat waited all night long for her to get out of bed and it's like that. And uh, it was it was oh. a funny moment, but painful too. <laughs> Gotta oh, love they it. Be vicious, and I love them so much. I know. Here's a good question from Adam. Adam says, "Peter, would you ever turn down a role based on your personal beliefs?" And a follow up question: How were those Fritos? He says. Well, second second question first. The Fritos, uh, Fritos are always good. They're they're a delightful delightful treat. Uh, one episode, uh, I think it was the the this. Uh, I think it was this past season. Um, yeah, it's the one where I think the camera starts in the vending machine and I get the, the chili cheese Fritos and then I'm walked down and I get kind of ambushed by the cameras. And so I think it was like, it might've been the first episode of, of <laughs> season five or one of the first ones. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, so there's this shot of me walking down the hallway, eating, like opening a bag of Fritos and eating them. Um, I don't know what made it in the final cut. I don't. I think they're already open, mm-hmm. which is a shame because they had to like keep giving me new bags oh. of Fritos every sing, for every single take because part of it was me opening them, um, at least in in, in what we shot, mm-hmm. and then and then chowing chowing down. Um, and I've over the years I've I've learned ways to 
uh, during eating scenes to minimize how much I eat okay. because you can get real full real fast. Sure. I was talking to somebody about this uh, recently. I don't know if it, I, don't, I don't know if it was on our last talk or not, but I, um, I did uh, I did the short film um, where we're all around the table eating like sausage and, and potatoes and and I like I worked it like so I had basically two bites the whole time and my my co-star my friend Stafford who was in Gunslingers too was um I just chowing down oh no <laughs> he ended up eating like a dozen sausages and he felt so sick but anyway I had to I had to eat at least like a handful of of these Fritos for every take um and and I love them but I I didn't love them so much by the end of the day no but the, the, the prop people were so nice they uh all the bags that I had opened, all the leftover chips, they poured into a giant Ziploc and they let me take home at the end. Of the <laughs> there you go. So I had chili cheese Fritos for a while. I bet. I bet. Um, and the other question is what I turned down, excuse me. Um, a Based role, on a belief. Yeah. My beliefs. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, it would depend on, on this, the specifics, um, uh, obviously, mm -hmm. but yeah, if, 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 if I f thought that a project was um, espousing uh, or condoning uh, any sort of hatred or 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 bigotry or 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 violence against a, um, a marginalized group or, or, or something like that, then then yeah. Um, fortunately, I've never I haven't come across that that yet, and also. Um, you know, I rely on, on, on friends I have, um, both in the business and not in the business to, to help with that. I, um, uh, there's a lot of people working in the film and television world. Um, and it's still, it's still a very small community. So it's pretty easy to find out if, um, if somebody has producer or director or whoever, has any kind of uh, reputation that I wouldn't vibe with, but mm -hmm. um, so far I haven't, I haven't come across that. Well, that's um, good. That's good. It also lets you to uh, apply yourself to like do do something that you really enjoy. Yeah, I've, yeah, you know as well. I mean, I'm not working nonstop, so uh, you know I'll take it where I can get it. Yeah, but, uh, I won't do something that's that's uh, you know hate filled or, or no, exactly. No, that's that's good. That's that's good practice to have. Uh, here's a question from Robin Salazar. Salazar, she says, Peter, can I get you to sign my Longmire poster since you played a uh, coroner? I did play the coroner. Um, of course you can. I don't know how, but um, <laughs> if, you, if you find me on the streets of Albuquerque in, in my mask. There you <laughs> I, go. I'll sign it. Um, yeah, Longmire. That was, uh, um, that was fun. It's just one little short scene in episode, I think it's like 402 uh, of Longmire. Um, and we filmed it in Santa Fe at a old Masonic Lodge. It was a kitchen. Okay. Masonic Lodge that they turned into a, a morgue. Morgue is that what you call it? Yeah. Yeah, I think a, so. A coroner office. It's yep. a morgue. Um, and and uh, we did. I was actually. I'm actually in two episodes. Um, and the very end of the lat, the previous episode, is just a voice on the phone, um, telling the guy to come over here to the the coronary, the the morgue. Um, but gosh, we did that whole thing, both episodes and the whole scene in an hour and a half, which is below, still blows my mind. Like talk about working as quick as possible, getting as much as you can and as little time as you can and not sacrificing quality. Um, they were just, yeah, they were great to work with. That was a lot of fun. It was the middle of the night. I was so tired. It was like <laughs> two o'clock in the morning. But um, yeah, that was a great group. That was a great show. I just texted Sandra off camera here. I told her, I said, remember it's a long, a long wire season four, episode two. So, cause she watches the show and we were talking about that today, your appearance in that. Uh, I haven't seen it myself either. It I'll, I'll let you know if it's a different episode, but it's also on my IMDb. I think. Yeah. We'll double check it. We'll find out for sure. We'll go back and check that out. That's cool. But yeah, that was, um, this one is also one of the only shows I've been on that has allowed me to, uh, to have a beard. Oh, which is what I usually have in, in my, my, my normal day life. Mm -hmm. But, um, Usually make me uh, usually make me shave it off for whatever show I'm doing. But that's like I'm sure I'm sure you know Lou Temple in the business. He's a friend of mine. You know, played in Walk a Day. He's played in everything. I mean, he's he's a chameleon. He's played in. I mean, he even played a voice in Rango. But his mm -hmm. mustache is an iconic mustache, 
And, you know, he, that's something that's very important to him to be able to keep his mustache. And there are, there have been quite a few shows where he's had movies or where he's had to shave it, but it's, you know, it is nice when you can keep your pref, your preferred, you know, dress, you know, or, you know, body style, you know, consistent, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was joking about that the other day. I remember doing some product review videos where I, cause you know me, I've always had a mustache of some sort of handlebars or something like that. One time I actually started the video and by the time I finished in the, in the start of shooting a video, which sometimes I hate doing product reviews. Um, and by the time I finished it, I had shaved. So in the beginning of the video, I got a, a handlebar mustache like Lemmy from Motorhead. And at the end of the video, I'm completely shaved, right? So it's really bizarre. Really makes you people pay attention or they uh, it's see if they're paying attention. Um, the last time you were here, we started talking about uh, season six, Better Call Saul, and it seemed like it was forever away. You know, and we never knew when they're going to start. No one knew, not even Tom. No one knew when we're, they're going to get back to, to filming. It's here. Yeah. They're, they're, you're filming right now. Is it, is, is it kind of bittersweet for you? Do you, are you? Are you feeling that 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 finishing line coming up a little bit, a little closer than uh, you'd prefer it to be? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, this is... Um, without... Without diminishing my experiences on, on any other production, because I've I've had a, a really um, I've been really lucky in my 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 short career, but really lucky to have to work with just wonderful human beings. Um, but by far, I think Better Call Saul, the the crew on that, um, from the from the top down, from you know Peter and Vince all the way. All the way down to me is um, everyone has been <laughs> just so delightful and just really good, good, which is a meaningless word, uh, just really delightful human beings, respectful, and so incredibly talented. Um, God, the crew is just massively talented, um, not to mention, um, you know, the, the main cast. Uh, so it's been a, it's been a little bit like having a, an annual it's like having an annual vacation with family that, that you don't get to see very often for me like once a year or I guess it's been a while now <clears throat> since we did season five but it was for a while it was like once once a year once a year and every year and a half just getting to spend a couple of days with family uh, your favorite people um so yeah I'll, I'll miss that I'll miss yeah that for sure you know, it's funny. I I asked. I directly asked this question to to Vince Gilligan when he was here the last time, and said, you know, is there any? Uh, I, I obviously there's so many stories to be told from within the Gilliverse, but are you going to commit to putting more things uh, to to tape? And mm-hmm. you know, he had basically said, um, you know, uh, I don't know. We'll revisit it later. You know, and and he's a very smart man. He knows when not to produce something. You know, you know, uh, I mean, I'm sure he'll be doing a ton of things, but he he's kind of alluding that there's not going to be anything else. But I, I encourage people to go back and watch some of our shows because there's a little hidden hints I've, I've detected. A lot of times things come in one year and go out the other, and I have to watch some of the episodes back to, to catch what some people have said. Mm-hmm. And, and I've heard some hints. It just feels like there's more that could be coming. I'm looking forward to that. But that being said, and I know all of you guys and girls are all on NDAs and things like that, you know, for, for you can't share what you can't share. And you can answer this how you like to answer, or uh, you can you, you can not answer the question. But if, first of all, are you being called back for season six, or have you been to set yet, or is it something you can't answer yet, or do you prefer not to? I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know any more about season six than you do. I'll okay. Say that. Okay, that's good. That, that's good. That's that's fair to say. I I know. I I think I can speak for all of us that we're looking forward to seeing Oakley at least a couple more times. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, let's fingers crossed for sure. And yeah, the the production's underway. There were people on Facebook were sharing some. Uh, I, w- I won't say what they were sh- sharing, uh, but some nights, uh, some filming taking place in the night the other night. There it could have been as early as yesterday, the day before. So that's cool, and some yeah. really really cool things. Have you been out around town at all, seeing any of this going on, or? Uh, no, no, um, I don't, um, I don't really get around town these days. <laughs> Are you homebody for homebody for the most part? Yeah. I mean, my, uh, uh my daughter is, uh, uh, in, in school, uh, pre-K, mm-hmm. but, uh, but she, it's an actual class, an online class. So I, I do that with her, uh, during the day. And then we have, you know, kind of set places we go like to the grocery store and back or, or to my mom house and back you know we don't really 
get out and about. Uh, and that being said, I've, I've seen I've seen a lot of location signs. You know, the little yellow with the arrow. Mm-hmm. See them all over, um, but I haven't seen any filming yet. Okay. Speaking of your daughter, I was creeping your Facebook page earlier today. Always getting into the mindset of uh, of the show, and uh, she has a bir- we won't say the day, but she has a birthday right around a day or so of our anniversary here too. So she's got a birthday coming up uh, yeah. somewhat soon. Somewhat soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Be six, right? Uh, five. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's great. Uh, here is a question from uh, Josh Gordon. Josh says. Do you go to table reads for Better Call Saul? And obviously this would be back in the day of physical going to table reads. Or do you only show up to shoot your scene and then do the recurring, uh, uh, usually show up at table read, uh, ta- re- recurring guests, or rec- uh, yeah, recurring guests, usually show up at table reads or just for their scenes? Um, it depends on the production. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't been to a table read for Better Call Saul. I know they've had a few because they've, they've, they've had some publicity events. Um at, at least for the pilot, I've seen pictures and stuff. But uh, I, there's there's some productions who have table like like official table reads for every single episode. Uh, there's some that that don't have them at all. There's some that just the main cast will get together at lunch and read through an episode. So um, I have I've been to a few on other productions, but not with Saul. With Saul, I just um, pardon me. I just um, I just show up where they tell me. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice. It's a little bit like being uh, being kidnapped. I just uh, like a day or two before, like <laughs> yeah, a nice kidnapping yeah. if there's such a thing. Yeah, when you're where your kidnappers feed your Fritos nonstop, <laughs> endless supply. Some people might go for that. Uh, you know, here's a question way out of order, but and it's, it's my fault. It's strictly my my fault here. This is from Crow, and you're talking earlier about Wandavision. Uh, do you mention one division? I'm curious. Are you an, are you an MCU fan? And thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, I, absolutely. I am. I love all those movies. Nice. Um, I think the MCU has, uh, they've done such a, such an amazing job at having this, um, this whole, this whole universe. Like they, they were able to, to capture that sort of same, magic that they had in the comic books where you have this this totally shared universe where their characters cross over they have their own stories and they all get together for other stories you know it's um but but they haven't really obviously no one's ever done that on on film before and it's just it's curated so well um i mean think about how many movies there are there's like 25 of them and there's only like maybe like two or three that i i don't really plan on watching again and the rest i'm happy to watch anytime that's good they're great they're made they're made so well and they all have they all have the same sort of flavor but but also completely unique in the the original voices um yeah i'm liking that in the star wars in the star wars universe as well too some of the things that they're coming out and that's that's still on the horizon coming out fan Mm -hmm. are you a star wars fan i assume yeah yeah 100 percent Some good stuff coming there. Uh, This is a question from, and we're getting close to the end of the hour here, so I'm trying to get close to, uh, trying to get everybody that I can, from Renata. She says, as your character, or uh, for your character in Better Call Saul, what were your real motivations, feelings about Jimmy? Were you just in awe and jealous of him, or did you have a special soft spot and actually cared if he succeeded? That's a tough question. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a good question. I don't think Bill cares if Jimmy succeeds. I think there's there's, def- there's definite uh, rivalry there. Um, I don't really know how or where that began. Um, it just sort of it was there from from the beginning. I don't know if they. Uh, my guess uh, is that they they probably had to work with or against each other early on and. Uh, Jimmy probably uh, pulled the rug up from under me or, or it's in some, in some, you know, scene off, off camera somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, No, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think Bill cares if Jimmy succeeds, but I think that Bill is a human being and recognizes Jimmy as a human being. And even though it's so much fun to gloat and to uh, punch down, I guess, at him, um, you know, there's that sequence in 
with Chuck. I think, I think it's some some cost. I think it's the, that same the same episode, but earlier on in the jail scene, mm. where where he's going to go to 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 jail and and in the end, Bill sort of relents and says that uh, he'll do what he can to try to get him seen before a judge sooner than than he might otherwise, because I think it's just that uh, human being. Not, is yeah, it just there's this moment of like it was fun, but this is real. I mean, this is his life, and and I don't want to see somebody like you know destroyed. I just want to just want to be better. Suffer a little bit, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, kill a mother for a fireplace kind of thing. Yeah, so somewhere right in the middle. Right? Yeah, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was on the tip of my tongue as well too. It's one of my favorite moments between the two of you, between the two of the characters. You know, because, you know, it's like having a, a person that you don't really like in your life. And it's like, you don't really wish him any harm. But then, and then something bad happens to him. And it's like, oh, man. All right. Well, you know, what can I do to help you out? You know, like, it's it's just that moment, right? You don't yeah. necessarily want to see them succeed. You don't want to see them fall down and on their luck either. So that was cool. And it was very believable, too. Good writing on that episode. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. And it really speaks to, 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 to real life and how we have our... You know, some of us have our, our rivals or nemeses, uh, tongue in cheek or, or even mm -hmm. honestly. But so much of so much of the 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 fighting or the sparring is is performative. You know, it's like showing other people or showing each other like who's the boss or or, or whatever. But but every now and then, when when you get past that into the reality of the situation, it, it hits you. And then that's a moment where you find out if somebody's, you know. A, a decent human being at the heart of them or, or not. Mm -hmm. I think I think Bill is I think Bill is a decent human being at the heart of it despite <laughs> despite all the hell that uh that he and Jimmy have, have put each other through. I, I think um I think he's a decent human being. I agree hundred percent. And once again this is a perfect segue because one of the questions I had, which will lead into a question from uh from the chat as well too, when mm -hmm. Tom was here just a couple of episodes back, about three episodes back he was here. And we got talking about how there is no small role inside inside the Gillivers, whether it's Breaking Bad, El Camino, or, or Better Call Saul. No matter how small the character can be, or originally on on script, in script, um, you know, it, it serves a purpose. And Oakley was a character that really didn't necessarily going to have this longevity that we see now. So a couple questions. One, did you ever foresee Bill being around? Like we're going into season six and could potentially, I, I mean, I feel we could see him. Um, and two from, I know, I know I pronounce this name wrong all the time I, and they've corrected me a few times. It's a fetus. It's fetiset. I'm, I'm, I know I'm saying it wrong. I'm, I, I apologize, but it says, did you expect to become such a lovable character to the fandom? So number, number one, Oakley has lasted five seasons and, you know, very memorable. And then did you expect to become such a lovable character? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not at all. I, 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 I continually. Uh, always blows me away um, when, when people are, are kind enough to to tell me to write or whatever to to say that they they enjoyed the character. Um, it means it means a lot to me. But no, I, I didn't I didn't expect it at all. After um, see when when I when I first got the jo the, the job, I, I knew I was going to be in the f two episodes. The first one was which is essentially petty with a prior. I think that's all I essentially all I say throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one was the the bathroom, the 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 whole roast beast um, thing. Um, and at the time, uh, um, I know we're running out of time. I don't oh, know you could don't take it down. We're good. We're good. Go on and on about it, but no, I just thought it was just kind of a one and done, like just just in and out. That, that was it. And then I didn't I didn't know I, I didn't know anything about the show when I was filming. I didn't know what the tone of it was. I don't know if it was like more of a comedy or not, because because it was so secretive that all I got were my lines mm -hmm. and and Jimmy's. Um, so I didn't really know anything about it. I, and it just seemed like it was just kind of a, you know, a walk on, do a little weird little scene and then, and then be done. And yep. then, um, um, well, I think Bob and I had maybe a little bit of a, a little bit of a connection, a little bit like a conversation, uh, off screen between takes, um, that, that may have helped. Um, that's, I guess a story for another time, mm -hmm. but, um, I think we, we just we had some sort of connection both on screen and off screen that led to well let's try bringing him back again for for another like weird weird interaction season two. and I think it just kind of led one season to the next I think we we just all enjoyed working with each other enough uh, and then I think it sort of 
became a train that couldn't stop <laughs> in the first three gotta stick him in the season four or season five um no i don't know i don't i don't even question it i love it i love every every moment of working on that show and uh i wouldn't trade it for anything that's good um, but i don't i don't deign to know anything <laughs> about <laughs> what's going on in the writer's heads um, what, one of the things that, that I thought was really, really cool, the first time you were here, and, and for those, again, for those that, uh, people that haven't seen the episode where you were here last time, the very first episode, go back and watch it, please. It's a really good episode. But you talked about meeting Bob for the first time, and it was an awkward mm-hmm. meeting that you were meeting him the very first time, awkward place. But this is pretty cool. I, um, recently, I, I don't know how many episodes back, it's got to be probably about six episodes back at least, I had uh, Rex Lynn on the show, uh, who plays mm-hmm. Kevin Wattell from Mesa Verde. And he was telling me that for his first time, so he's sharing such a uh, similar experience to you meeting Bob for the first time. And the first time meeting him was the uh, um, uh, the Wexer versus uh, Goodman uh, scenes there, whatever. And, and Jimmy's got the esteem in the parking garage. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Kevin's calling him on his cell phone, comes out there and he goes to talk to Jimmy. And he's like, okay, what's it going to take to get the, these videos to stop playing these commercials, whatever. And he was saying, seeing the esteem to him was like seeing the Batmobile. Okay. Like it was literally like seeing the Batmobile and it, he's in the, he's in the presence of the Batmobile. Has there been anything on the show for you that's prop wise? That's just been like, what, it's so cool looking back at it. Like, Oh my God, I, I'm actually working with, I'm, I'm experiencing this or I know it sounds silly, but is there any props or anything like that? It's just kind of mind blowing for the fanboy in yourself. Yeah. Like props. Like being this, um, the esteem being a prop or is, you know, that yeah, kind of, yeah. I mean, all, I like 90% of my scenes are, Either in the hallway or in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know. Like like that that hallway there that that we, that we use in in so much of the show. I think it's just just having just knowing that I've walked up and down that hallway in a number of scenes, and I've sat around the corner on that bench just hanging out, you know, touching up makeup or eating lunch or just just that just that courthouse in general which i'd never been inside before but um it was a it's a little different it was just a little different for me um uh sidebar i think rex lynn is phenomenal i think great in that show and in others um but um but because i was in like the first the the second episode without having seen it before like i didn't even know anything about it so i think it was a, a little bit different experience for me but i would feel that way if i saw that car yeah, I bet, right? Actually, I did see the car. They filmed uh, they filmed a scene uh, not far from my house, and I looked out, looked out the window one day, and I saw his car, and I did get I did get that that fanboy flutter. For That's sure. so cool. That's the so car, cool. Yeah. Well, speaking of fanboy, let, let's stay on the for a quick second on that esteem. We won't mm-hmm. talk about for people that aren't caught up to speed so far. Um, uh, you know, we we certainly don't want to give any spoilers. But are you looking forward to seeing that uh, Cadillac uh, in season six? that we're seeing in the intros of so many of every show. Oh yeah. That's yeah, going to be great, am, isn't it? I am <clears throat> just beyond excited to see, to see this for all of it, just to, to see how, how it unfolds, uh, the timeline of breaking bad, how he gets where he is. Um, what happens to, to everybody, mm-hmm. that, you know, nothing about in the breaking bad universe, um, or timeline, I guess. Um, yeah yeah i am nervous and excited yeah for all of it but yeah the cadillac of course that's gonna be great and the suits and uh all that yeah there's gonna be a lot of eyes on nacho nacho's dad and lalo kim of course probably most uh, on everybody i mean there's a lot of girls who are loving nacho out there but there's a lot of every, uh, you know everyone loving kim and we're wondering what's gonna happen to her and Hamlin? Mm-hmm. oh yeah, yeah. And what's going to happen to Bill? That, that's, that's what should be on everyone's minds. Well, he's still working at the courthouse. You know he is. <laughs> <laughs> still eating Fritos. I'm being reminded from Sandra here. Now, I think this happened after your visit. I, I think it might have kicked off as a thing, as a shtick that we did. And this is thanks to Tom. Did we ever bring up the smell of the Gilliverse to you when you are on the show? <laughs> no? <laughs> I was thinking of that. Uh, no, that, that, that came, I think, in the second episode. So you, think, do you know right the after, answer? Do you know the answer? 
Is there an actual answer? Yeah. So you, you just ask people. No, we all, there's a real answer. And I, I mean, in the, in the, oh, in the warped shoot, mindset of Tom Schnell is, yeah. So, okay. We're going to pose a question to you right now. Thanks to Sandra reminding me. And I think Zoko reminded her to remind us. So reminded everyone in the chat. So there's two things. It smells like this and yeah. this and the Gillivers. What would you, what would you guess it would be? Did Tom come up with it? Yep. So it's probably like, <laughs> it's probably something I don't really want to repeat. Um, That's pretty safe. Uh, is one of them bacon? Well, yes. Yes, actually. Yes. Okay. The other one I'm going to get wrong, so I don't remember. But like butts. Butts? Bacon and butts? Okay. That's Tom. Yeah. Mm. No, but it, it close bacon and fear, and sometimes people fear, fear. butts. Yeah. No, I heard it. I heard that. I just, I just forgot it. Bacon and fear. Yeah, I would throw some green chili in there. Okay. I think a lot of it smells like green chili to me. You know what I want to do? I just don't have the time to do this. So any aspiring fan that wants to do this, I will give you full credit for it. If you can go through every single episode where we ask that question, and find the timestamps, and when we ask it, I want to put together a, a montage. Because there's been some good ones. The Moncada brothers gave us like, you know, Mexican cuisine and such and such. There's been gun yeah. smoking this. Uh, oh, man, there's been so many good ones. You know, I want to try to put and I haven't asked every guest. Like I forget sometimes. So out of, you know, 40 some odd episodes, we probably have a good 35. And that'd yeah. be fun to see everyone's answers. Yeah. Mine, I think mine would be green chili and leather. OK, I like it. There you go. Timestamp. Oh, or... It's just the sense I get. Yeah. It's awesome. One thing you got to take a look at this. This is something you can do without watching one of my whole episodes. When Tom was on, I made a bit of a snippet, uh, a, a kind of a, a side video with his episode. And he shows a stack of all th 13 episodes that he's had. He has the index cards at home. So check that out. If you get a chance to see that, it's a one minute video. Nice. It's on the channel. Well, listen, as, as we're wrapping up here, are there any things that you'd like to promote anything you're doing at all other than um, the most important thing at home, taking care of the, the babies and fur babies and, and that kind of stuff, any yeah. projects or charities or anything of that nature? Oh, I should. That's that's another list I should make for the next time. Mm -hmm. Remember that. No problem. Well, that, um, that means we're going to have you back again, too. You'll come back, right? <laughs> yeah, just, 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 just as far as, far as projects, um, I made a movie, uh, a Netflix film called Surrounded with Letitia Wright and Michael K. Williams. It should be coming out. I don't know when it's coming out. Probably in the next uh, few months or so. That's worth checking out. That That should be a good one. Um, and, um, um, if you're interested, there's, uh, there's going to be a, uh, a, a zoom panel on, on acting, uh, in New Mexico, an actor's panel that's going to happen on May 1st. And I'll throw the details on, on, on social media. Uh, if you're interested in, in checking that out, it should be good. Otherwise just, you know, take care of each other. There's, there's, there's a lot of bad out there and yeah. there's a lot of people who are having a hard time. Um, and um, just do what you can to lend a hand. Mm -hmm. I, uh, that, that's good. And I follow you very closely on Twitter. Obviously, you know that we're friends on Twitter there. And I see a lot of the things that, you know, you're very passionate about. And, and yeah, taking care of, of your uh, loved ones and things of that nature are paramount. You know, it, it's like, it's you know, it's kind of sad. We're getting back to a normal, uh, close to it. And it's bringing the bad stuff coming back along with it as well, too. You know, it's how, how quickly do we want to get back to that? Right. We do, we kind of don't. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, listen, it has been an absolute pleasure having you back again. I, for having me. It's all, fun. Always a pleasure. And I mean, you were a great guest, the the best guest we could have possibly ever had to kick off the show. And and I'm very, <laughs> if, if it feels like kind of a homecoming tonight, I'm really happy to have you here. This yeah, great. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And I, I do have a list here of other people I'd like to thank as well, too. Obviously, first and foremost, you. Uh, but a big thank you to my beautiful Sandra Lee, who is our executive producer here as well, too. I wouldn't be able to do these things uh, without her, uh, her her encouragement. And, you know, it's like having a good lady in your life, right? Uh, our show sponsors, Warren, Rachel, and team at bobbleheads.com. Thank you so much for your uh, valuable support. We want to thank our uh, channel members here on the uh, YouTube channel, our Patreon supporters, our channel moderators uh, for running our chats efficiently. Uh, our YouTube subscribers, our super chatters, our PayPal donators, and those that buy our merch that you see me wearing here at the Broadstash Boutique. Links are all down in the description down below. And we encourage you to check out uh, same time next week, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Next week, we from Breaking Bad and El Camino, we you know him as Old Joe. We have actor Larry Hankin on the show. We're looking forward to that. 
And if you want to follow us on Instagram or Facebook, we're there at Inside the Gilliverse. Come and give us some love and we'll give it right back. And we'll look forward to seeing you uh, next week. Same time. Have a great weekend out there. And Peter, I'll say goodbye to you off the air. Thanks so much, everyone. Hope you have a safe and fantastic weekend. And we will look forward to seeing you very, very soon. And until next time, cheers. Thanks again for tuning in to Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. Be sure to check back each week for more great discussions and interviews with cast and crew from Breaking Bad El Camino and Better Call Saul. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends.